Wow, you look at all these dangly things. Are they fruits? Can eat one or not? How come got one hole down there? Ah? Let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look, down here so many plants and animals. <laughs> If you had ever been around the Bukit Timah or Hindheat Nature Reserves, you had most likely seen all these bulbous things hanging off the trunks of the trees here. And although they may seem like fruits, these are actually figs from either the common red or yellow stem fig tree. Although they do look similar, the red and yellow versions are actually two separate species that can be found throughout Southeast Asia, Taiwan and New Guinea. And the common red stem fig has also even been spotted as far down as Australia. Eh, but wait, 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 unfixed fruits? Well, not really. A fruit is the product of a pollinated flower, but you will never see a flower on a fig tree, at least not in the traditional appearance that you learn of flowers in school. Well, okay, I'm gonna find a fig off the ground. Okay, we've got one over here because you're not supposed to pluck anything off the tree, right? But if you actually look inside the fig, okay, you can actually tell that it is an inverted flower. More specifically, figs are actually a cyconium, which is a fleshy and hollow structure with a lot of small flowers on the inside surface. And of course, as with other regular flowers, the flowers inside this fig would also become fruits. So figs are fruits, but only sometimes, kind of. But how exactly do these flowers get pollinated if they're enclosed inside this structure? Well, that's why figs have this small hole at the bottom called osteo. Figs actually have a special relationship with a family of insects known as fig wasps. And this relationship is called obligate mutualism. This is a step up from the regular mutualism because the term obligate means that the species must rely on each other. If not, they cannot survive. So in the case for the figs and the fig wasps, they are completely reliant on each other for reproduction. Although there are several slight variations for different fig species, the general concept starts with the figs releasing an aroma to attract the females of their partner fig wasp when they are ready for pollination. This aroma lets them know that the figs are ready to be entered, and the female wasps do so by squeezing their way through the small holes, which again are the osteoles. Because the osteole is so tight, the females will lose their wings and antennae in the process of going in. However, it doesn't matter. Because once inside, the female wasp only has one mission, and that is to lay her eggs in some of the flowers in the fig. So she goes about doing that by crawling around the syconium and depositing her eggs. But by doing so, she's also spreading the pollen that she had picked up from the fig she was born in. This pollinates all of the female flowers inside. Now since she has fulfilled her life's purpose of creating babies, she dies inside the fig. But thanks to her noble sacrifice, the flowers with eggs in them are now pollinated and will develop into a gall that acts as food for the wasp larvae inside, while the rest of the flowers become fruits. As time passes, the male larvae are the first to develop into wasps, and immediately after coming out from their galls, these blind and wingless boys will mate with the females even before they hatch. They then go about digging exit tunnels for the females before dying inside the fig. But soon after, the females start to hatch, and in order to leave the fig, they first need to find the exit tunnels which she would get to after passing by all the male flowers and getting covered in pollen. Once free, she spends her very short adulthood finding a new fig to lay her eggs in, while the original fig she was born in would start to reach its peak ripeness, and would start to emanate a different scent that attracts the birds and mammals to eat their ripe fruits so as to help disperse their seeds. And just like this, the cycle continues on. But again, this mutualistic relationship is not special to the common red or yellow stem fig. Every fig has a partnership with these insects, and each species actually has a specific partner wasp. Even the species of figs that you can find in the supermarket. However, don't worry, most store-bought figs are farmed without wasps nowadays. And even if the farm is OG and stick to the old-fashioned ways, Figs do actually produce a very efficient enzyme called phycin that converts the dead wasps into nutrients for the tree. 
so you won't actually be eating any wasp corpses. But since we are on the topic of eating, this one can eat one, no? it's fixed lay. No, you cannot. Aside from being illegal, you can never be sure that the fruits you pluck off the trees are actually safe for consumption. Especially since figs are a common food source for birds and bats that carry around a lot of diseases that may not be good for your tummy. Leave them for the wild animals, because these figs are actually a very important source of sustenance for them. You see, a lot of trees have a specific fruiting season, and sometimes they even synchronize that with each other. But as you know by now, figs like these do not like to conform. So thanks to the wasp, they actually provide fruits for the animals all year round, making them a very important family of trees for the entire forest ecosystem. And that is all we have for today's episode. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all those fancy stuff. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks for watching. And remember, keep your eyes peeled because it is a jungle out there. <laughs>